And last but not least, all the way at the bottom, this is probably the biggest change that I'm gonna make in this video. The way that it's programmed right now is actual match coverages with match set to on are just too easy to glitch out and score against. And I've, I've put out many, many, many one play touchdowns against these type of defenses uh, that you guys can see are probably the glitches. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff with the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another tips video for you guys today. Then be going over the best coaching adjustments to use in Madden 24 right now. If you guys don't know how to access your coaching adjustments, all you have to do if you're on next gen consoles is push in the right stick and it'll bring in your coaching adjustments just like this. But before I get into it, if you guys want to see more videos like this, more tip videos about coaching adjustments and other things, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. When it comes to the offensive coaching adjustments, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there really isn't a lot to be gained here i would say the only one that i ever really use is ball carrier and that's because these top two are all about catching which you can do uh based off of what button you hit during the play blocking really just triggers a lot of penalties and doesn't really give you any real advantage uh but ball carrier can be good when it comes to uh conservative which really takes away you know disables things like um, juke moves, spin moves, you really can't do stuff like that anymore, but it'll also reduce your ability to fumble. So if you're running with a quarterback a lot, that's probably the biggest value when it comes to conservative ball carrier. Uh, other than that, if it's late in the game, you don't want to fumble, you can put conservative on. If you're playing against an opponent that's really good at strip tackling, which is something that you can do, gang tackling, uh, you know, stuff like that where they, they get the ball uh, out more often than not, you go to conservative. There are times where going to ball carrier conservative is helpful, and there's also a Aggressive, which to me is not I mean this is something where maybe you want to do that if you need to make a play if you if you're down and you gotta you know you know break more tackles to try to come back into a game you might want to put on aggressive now I'm gonna spend most of this video on the defensive side of the ball because this is the area where you can get the most advantages and there's also the most options on the offensive side is only like four where here I think there's about ten so this here obviously comes into play much more when playing Madden. If you're not saying your defensive coaching adjustments, you're missing out on a huge amount of advantages. Now, the first thing I want to mention when it comes to defensive coaching adjustments is that there's multiple ways to set these up. And I'm going to try to go over these multiple ways. Number one, you really it depends on how you play your defense. If you play man coverage, if you play zone coverage, if you play match coverage, there's multiple different ways to do this. So I'm going to start off with auto alignment all the way at the top. I guess I'll actually start off with auto flip. A lot of defenses require you to turn this off, especially a lot of defenses that I'm using. So this is something that I typically have set off now. I used to leave this on, but it's to the point where you can really, um, you know, most of the defenses I run anyway, I really want to flip them prior to set them up uh, prior in the huddle. You don't want to do that after because if you try to do that during the play, you're going to, you know, it's going to take too much time. Your opponent's going to hike the ball before you ever get an opportunity to, to flip the play. So if you plan on flipping the play at any point throughout the play, uh, it's best to do it in the huddle so that you come out on the field with this already set. So to me, it's best to have auto flip off, but that's really optional. It's something if you're not really flipping it for a specific purpose, it's probably best to leave it on. So like I said, I put out a lot of defenses where I have to flip the play because I'm trying to run a certain defender to the open side of the field or I'm trying to set up a certain blitz. So for me, I have it off. But if you're running a completely different defense, it's probably best to have it on. So that's what I mean. There's multiple ways to do this. Every one of these, I'm going to show you guys a reason for uh, two different ways to do that, which is something that I don't think I've ever really done in a video. Now, the next one is auto alignment. This one here, if you run a lot of man coverages, I think it might be best to leave it to default. If you run a lot of zone coverages, it's probably best to leave it to base so that you can hide those zone coverages pre-snap. Base coverage, if you guys don't know, basically shows every defense looking like a cover four shell before the play starts. But if you're running man coverage, that can really be an issue. I'm going to go ahead and back out and show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's pick a random man zero blitz here. And then on offense, I'll try to pick something. Uh, you know, Typically, if you run into something that has like three wide to one side, this can be a real issue. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. Basically, you can see how you know this is just not a good alignment for man coverage. It, it still looks like that same cover four shell. But if it's a zig route, you know, Chauncey Gardner Johnson never going to get there. If it's anything, a crossing route, anything, I don't have a lot of faith that my linebacker is going to cover a receiver at any point. So this is something where, like I was saying, if I, I can I can take this away by man aligning or base aligning by hitting wire triangle and then 
um, you know, right on the left stick there. And that'll basically, you know, as I accidentally backed everybody off, and that'll bring the, the cornerbacks onto the receivers and stuff like that, which is obviously better as it gives away your look. But that's what I mean. It's really difficult to uh, try to cover certain defenses if you're running man coverage with a, uh, a base set alignment, which is really not going to work out. Now, next up, we got cornerback matchups. And this is another one that really is based off of what type of defensive scheme you run. If you run a lot of zone coverage, I think it's best to leave it on balanced. And this is because your defender is only going to cover a certain area of the field anyway. Um, you can run this. I mean, if you run a lot of zone coverage, you can go by overall. But if your opponent figures that out and they start flipping the play, uh, if they start making motions, a lot of times the cornerback will try to follow and it'll mess up your defensive coverage. Sometimes it'll just be as simple as they'll try to flip the field and they take a lot less time. They take a lot longer to flip the field than actual offensive uh, formations do. So you'll notice that if your cornerbacks are trying to flip the field to match the receiver they're assigned to, a lot of times they'll do it too slowly and it'll just they'll just leave uh, somebody wide open. Um, you're, you know, your opponent will quick hike the ball or something like that to gain an advantage. So in those scenarios, if, once again, if you're running a lot of zone coverage, I think, and your opponent is trying to flip the play to get that type of advantage on you, it's best just to leave it to balanced. But once again, if you're running a lot of man coverage, especially if there's a really dominant receiver on the field, you're going to want to go by overall. If you have a, you know, I have like Darius Slay who's got X-Factors and stuff like that. He's going to be the guy that I would want to match up with, like a Devontae Adams or something, if I'm playing against, you know, any any elite receiver, Justin Jefferson, whatever. I'm going to want my best cornerback playing their best receiver, but that really only works in man coverage. Like I said, you can really gain advantages in zone coverage. Uh, if you're playing against somebody really fast like Tyreek Hill, you're going to want your fastest guy on him a lot of times so that you don't get burnt, beat deep. And if you're playing against a guy like Mike Evans, a tall receiver, you might want your tallest cornerback on him so you don't get out jumped and get mossed all the time. So there are a lot of advantages to be had here. But once again, it all goes back to whether you play man or zone because that's where the most advantages are found if you mirror that system. Now, when it comes to option defense, there really is no downside to playing conservative and focusing on the quarterback because if you don't have somebody there to contain the quarterback on read options, you're going to give up huge run plays. Next up, I have strip ball and tackling. These are very similar as they both pretty much do the same thing. Um, if you put these on aggressive, the idea is that they're aimed at getting more uh, fumbles, either a strip fumble or a hit stick fumble. But I don't really find either of these really work very well. And you can also get penalties um, for like face masks and stuff like that when it comes to strip ball. So that's not really worth it. To me, I find it's best now. And I used to put this one on aggressive and strip ball on conservative. But now I put them both on conservative. And the idea being that the best way to force fumbles in this game is a strip tackle, which you can get simply by hitting the RB or the R1 button, especially in like gang tackle scenarios where the running back's already being held up. You can come in with a late defender and just try to punch the ball out by hitting the rbr one button so to me it's best to just have the conservative setting on because this will have lower broken tackle chances and you'll also have um, less uh, less yards allowed after contact and last but not least all the way at the bottom this is probably the biggest change that i'm going to make in this video in the past when i ran things like cover four cover six trap if you guys remember that i put out um, a lot of coverages that were matching coverages i always recommended to put your zone coverage to match Match. But now I find that either people are figuring it out to the point where this is actually a detriment or it's just not programmed properly in the game or both. Uh, realistically, I don't use zone coverage match anymore when in conjunction with actual matching coverages. Matching coverages like if I go to cover for quarters or um, you know cover six, these are matching coverages that I find are kind of easy to glitch out if you're playing against an opponent that knows what they're doing. Uh, sp specifically cover three match, which to me, I have to find one of those. That one's probably the most broken, like right here. The overload three scene. I was using a cover three match for a while, and it was just, it was overreacting too much to, to short routes. Short routes like zig routes, uh, you know, anything. The outside cornerbacks just reacted too harshly and would just let guys get open wide down the field. So if you're running an actual matching coverage right now, like any of the ones I just showed you, I would say it's best to leave this off, to leave this to default. If you're, re if you're running a regular zone coverage, like a cover three sky or a regular cover four drop, I would say it's best to put this to match. And there's nothing really that I have tangible to prove this, but I find that cover three sky, specifically cover two, any of these defenses that are not designed to be matching coverages, I just feel like they cover a little bit tighter and a little bit closer. And like I said, I have nothing, no real proof behind that. I just find that, it, it you know, Madden, 
works in mysterious ways and I find that the way that it's programmed right now is actual match coverages with match set to on are just too easy to glitch out and score against. And I've, I've put out many, many, many one-play touchdowns against these type of defenses uh, that you guys can see are probably the glitchiest where they get open by like 10, 20, 30 yards, which really shouldn't be that way. So if you're running an actual matching zone coverage, don't put match on. Don't do that to yourself. You're going to be glitching out. your def You're going to see your defense get glitched out in ways that it really shouldn't be. Now, when it comes to your zone drop flats, if you set these, they override the zone coverage match anyway. So I don't really typically do this. Like I said, I leave my match on. And if I'm in a cover four, I'll typically just hard flat. I'll typically just play underneath and that'll override the coverage the same way. So it's something I don't really have to do here. But this way I would only really do if I have a specific yardage that I want them to cover. Like a zone drop flat set to zero. This is for throws behind the line of scrimmage. If you're running, if your opponent's running a lot of screen plays or a lot of swing routes to the running back or something like that, or this this might be one of the benefits of set to zero. Maybe they're running a lot of a bubble screens outside or a lot of you know, there's quick throws to the to the to the receiver on, uh, you know, in a, in a smoke route or something like that, right to the line of scrimmage. Then you're going to want to play to zero. But other than that, the best one for me is to set this to five, and that's because this will cover things like drag routes, flat routes, out routes of five yards. This is a good depth for that. Where typically I don't really find any of these other depths are going to be too useful. Now for curl flats. I typically set these from anywhere to 15 to 20 to 25, depending on what type of route I'm trying to cover. If you're trying to cover a slant, I would say 15 is good. If you're trying to cover a deep crosser that goes, you know, when it goes across the center of the field or something like that, 20 to 25, maybe a corner route would be 20 to 25. So it's really dependent on what your opponent is running, but I don't find that there's a natural, perfect setup for this. Uh, I would say, though, if I did set this just randomly throughout the game, I would say 20 to 25 because that's the depth where I would be more concerned with something like a corner route or, um, like I said, a deep crosser. So that would probably be, this one would be the most fluid. This would be the one that I would change based off of what my opponent's doing, where my actual flats are pretty much always set to five because I'm hard flatting all the time and I want to cover that area specifically. So that's how I run that. When it comes to zone drop hooks, I don't really mess with this too much. You can set this, like if somebody, if you're running a lot of cover three, sometimes I find it's best to set these hooks to about 10 to 15 so they can protect the seam. Sometimes I'll go deeper if somebody's really attacking up the seams, but that's not how I really cover seams anyway. This one here, I probably touch the least. I probably just leave this to default because zone drop hooks don't really do a ton. They're not very good. They don't really cover very well anyway. And I usually end up manning them to somebody so that I don't have to worry about the running back or the tight end or you know somebody that they can actually cover and then I'll just be using the entire sand of the field myself. So to me, zone drop hooks are probably the most worthless, so I touch them the least, but I don't really touch these either. Like I said, I usually leave these to default because I feel like Madden does a pretty good job at the moment of, uh, you know, I, with, of, of, of working those zones without me actually doing anything with them. Like I said, aside from like, you know, hard flatting or something like that. But other than that, I feel like they do a pretty good job. I only touch these if there's something that my opponent is constantly doing and getting open. Then I will start to experiment with these to try to figure out if I could stop it with a specific depth. But that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you guys want to see more coaching adjustments videos like this as the game changes, as I find new angles for success, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, I have more tip videos that I put out recently popping up. So if you guys want to learn more about the game, just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. I'm going to out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.